Good evening and thank you for joining us for Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Amanda Bowen. As always, you can get a hold of us in a couple of different ways if you need a forecast or if you have any comments or feedback for us. You can call our forecast recording line anytime at 1-800-472-0391 to get a forecast for your area. If you have internet access, you can also visit us on the web at weather.gov slash Alaska. There's lots of forecast information as well as other weather and climate information there. And you can always email us at nws.ar.tvweather at noaa.gov. Taking a look at the hazardous weather that we're expecting over the next day or two, we have a high wind warning in effect for the Juneau and Douglas areas. That's going to be for a Taku wind event with wind gusts up to 80 miles per hour. Those winds are expected to peak this evening and into the overnight hours, and those winds will certainly be capable of downing trees as well as have the potential of causing widespread power outages. So if you haven't prepared already, make sure you prepare now because those winds are only going to get stronger. That high wind warning is in effect until 9 a.m. Wednesday morning. Taking a look at our satellite imagery, we can see a low pressure system moving up the west coast of British Columbia towards the southern panhandle. And then over most of the mainland, we have clear skies. That's because we have high pressure in command. So that's what's causing those winds in the Juneau area, that gradient between that strong low pressure system coming northward towards the panhandle and that high pressure system sitting over the eastern mainland of the state. Much further west, we can also see a low spinning up off the Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia. That's going to be bringing a front as well as some rain into the Aleutians today. And finally, we have some clouds over the northwestern portion of the state associated with a trough with some breezy conditions there, but not much in the way of actual precipitation. Taking a look at our surface chart for today, we can see that low pressure system approaching the southern panhandle that we saw in the satellite imagery. 965 millibars, that's pretty strong for that area. We can also see that high pressure system centered right over the Alaska-Canada border at 1,027 millibars. So again, you see all those lines between the high pressure system and the low pressure system there. When you get those tight lines, that is a tight pressure gradient and that creates high winds. Now, specifically for the Juneau area, those winds are coming up and over the mountains and then accelerating as they come down, which is what causes such high winds for that area. Over the west coast of the state, we talked about some breezy conditions with a trough in the area. We are looking at the potential for some blowing snow along the coastal areas, as well as freezing spray for the northern Bering, Bering Strait and the southern Chukchi Seas for today. And then as we continue to move further west, we are looking at a strong 959 millibar low pressure system coming off the Ch Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia. And again, that's going to have a strong front with it, bringing rain into the Aleutians today. As we look ahead into tonight, we have our low pressure system over the southern panhandle. That's weakening quite a lot, but we still have that strong high pressure system moving east into western Canada. So that's going to keep that pressure gradient tight tonight. We still have those higher gusts for tonight for the Juneau and Douglas areas. As we go towards the west coast, of the state. We're still looking at some breezy conditions with some possible blowing snow along the coast, but for the Seward Peninsula as well as down into the St. Lawrence Island area, we have the potential of some fog tonight due to cold conditions that could be freezing fog if it develops. 
So be wary of freezing fog potential in those areas. We also have some freezing fog potential in the south central area, mostly the Anchorage area uh, tonight. So make sure to be aware of that potential tomorrow morning if you are heading out. That freezing fog can act like just a little bit of, of freezing rain sometimes as those droplets freeze as they form. So a very thin sheen of ice on things, making things slippery in freezing fog. Our strong low pressure system coming off of Russia continues to strengthen, bringing that front into the Aleutians with plenty of rain and even some snow into the southwestern portions of the state. Heading into Wednesday, we'll finally see those winds in the panhandle decrease as that low pressure system to the south continues to weaken and high pressure continues to move off towards the east. We'll still have mostly clear skies and cold conditions in place over the mainland with some breezy conditions continuing over the northwest portion of the state. Our low pressure off of Russia is weakening at this point on Wednesday. So we are looking at a weakening occluded front, but still bringing some rain and some patches of snow into the west coast. Behind that occluded front in the Western Aleutians, just south of the Western Aleutians, actually, we'll see our next low starting to develop on Wednesday, still weak at this point, 999 millibars. But as we head into Thursday, that low strengthens quite a lot and moves north of the Aleutians into the Bering Sea. We're looking at a 968 millibar low by Thursday afternoon. So that's going to be bringing with it a punch of winds as well as plenty of precipitation, mostly rain for the eastern Aleutians and a mix of rain and snow for the southern Alaska Peninsula on Thursday. We'll also see some snow starting to move back into the west coast as well as some into the northern Gulf Coast on Thursday. Snow, some snow showers for the panhandle, again with those winds letting up, will not be quite so dry and cold, so some chance of snow showers for the panhandle on Thursday. Looking at our temperatures for Wednesday morning, plenty of cold air across the state ranging from about the negative teens and negative 20s across the interior to cold even down into south central with negative one degrees out on the Kenai Peninsula, about five degrees at Anchorage. Cold even in the panhandle with those winds bringing cold air with it. So 19 at Juneau, looks like 15 at Skagway tonight. A little bit warmer for the Aleutians as usual, as well as temperatures in the 30s for some of the immediate west coast. Taking a look at temperatures Wednesday afternoon, it's going to be another cold one across most of the state, including the northern panhandle. The southern panhandle, we're looking at temperatures in the 30s as that low pressure system moves in a little bit closer, bringing some clouds that will help it not get quite so cold. West coast, looking at temperatures in the 30s along the immediate coast with upper teens and 20s for the north slope. For Thursday morning, not quite as cold as Wednesday morning, so lows in the negative teens across much of the interior, at least positive all the way down through south central. Still fairly chilly, but a little bit warmer for the panhandle with temperatures in the 20s and still looking at some upper 20s to low 30s for the immediate west coast with teens a little bit further inland. And for Thursday afternoon, we finally start to see a little bit of warming for places that have been quite a lot colder than usual over the last number of days. So while negative single digits doesn't sound so warm for the interior, uh, still plenty much warmer than what we've been seeing the last few days. So a warming trend as that high pressure system, that cold high pressure system continues to move further east into Canada, uh, allowing some of that slightly relatively warmer air into the mainland of the state. So uh, positive single digits to negative single digits for much of the interior, getting all the way up into the 20s for South Central and even some 30s to around 40 there again along the Gulf Coast. 
warming in the panhandle to the 30s, uh, except for Skagway looking like 27 there on Thursday afternoon. And for the West Coast, we are looking at temperatures in the 20s and 30s as well. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. On to a look at your aviation weather. Starting out with flying weather for Wednesday morning, we're looking at some IFR conditions coming into the Bering Sea from the central Bering, stretching down into the eastern Aleutians. Also along the western Seward Peninsula, as well as some spotty IFR conditions across the interior. Looking at Wednesday afternoon, we do see a lot of improvement to MVFR conditions over the mainland where we saw those IFR conditions for Wednesday morning, as well as MVFR over the southern panhandle again. Those IFR conditions continue to move eastward through the Bering Sea, so by Wednesday afternoon we are looking at it making it all the way almost to the Bristol Bay coast and stretching down into the Alaska Peninsula. Thursday morning, we'll see IFR conditions returning across some spotty patches in the interior, as well as developing along the central north slope from about Ukiakvik points east along the coast and a little bit in the interior there. Those IFR conditions in southwest come onshore onto the YK Delta and into the Bristol Bay area for Thursday morning. NVFR conditions for much of the Aleutians on Wednesday morning, as well as much of the Panhandle. And on Thursday afternoon, we'll see some improvement along the North Slope with IFR relegating itself just to the very immediate coast along the North Slope, as well as points north into the Beaufort Sea. Also, IFR spreading into the northern Alaska Peninsula, as well as portions of the Kenai Peninsula and the northern portion of Kodiak Island. Some IFR conditions also for the southern Panhandle and around a low pressure system in the southern bearing impacting the eastern Aleutians. For pass conditions on Wednesday, Anaktuvik Pass VFR as well as Adigan Pass and Lake Clark and Merrill Passes all VFR conditions expected on Wednesday. Same at Rainy Pass VFR and Windy Pass VFR as well, Isbell Pass VFR, but at Mentasta Pass we're looking at some MVFR conditions during the morning hours but improving to VFR Wednesday afternoon. Tanita Pass as well as Portage Pass, both VFR on Wednesday, and Chilkoot and White Passes, both VFR on Wednesday as well. Taking a look at our freezing levels for Wednesday morning, surface freezing level across almost the entire state with just a couple of exceptions. One along the north slope just east of Utkiakvik, about 2,000 foot freezing level there, and 2,000 foot freezing level coming up into the Alaska Peninsula for Wednesday morning. For icing, we're looking at isolated moderate icing above about 2,000 feet on Wednesday for much of the North Slope area, as well as some areas of isolated moderate icing across the Alaska Peninsula above about 5,000 feet on Wednesday. Looking at your winds for the jet stream on Wednesday, we've got one low pressure system just off the Kam Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia with our strongest portion of the jet far south from there, even south of the Aleutians from about 100 to 130 knots out of the northwest. Again, that's going to be south of the Aleutians there. We have a bit of a secondary jet on the east side of that low with winds out of the south over the central bearing at about 90 knots. And looking at 9,000 feet winds, we have our same low pressure system over eastern Russia, as well as another low over the southern panhandle with high pressure over the north slope on Wednesday. So our strongest winds are actually going to be over the eastern Aleutians and stretching up through the central Bering Sea. Those winds are going to be out of the south and southwest. 50 to 60 knots, a pretty narrow band of those strongest winds. We also have some strong winds out of the northeast and east over the northern portions of the panhandle. Otherwise, not a whole lot of wind over the mainland, five to about 20 knots, peaking over the Chukchi Sea coast at about 35 knots out of the south and southwest. At 3,000 feet, we've got our same low pressure systems, eastern Russia and the southern panhandle, with strongest winds over the central bearing, once again about 50 to 55 knots out of the south, with another secondary peak near Yakutat 
coming offshore out of the east at about 65 knots there. And finally, turbulence, plenty of considerable moderate turbulence for Wednesday, below 4,000 feet across the Aleutians, below 6,000 feet across the Panhandle and Northern Gulf, and below 4,000 feet for the northwestern portion of the state, as well as St. Lawrence Island. It's kind of hard to explain how important weather is to our job. I mean, it really, affects everything we do. In 2018, NOAA launches the GOES-S satellite, which takes its place in orbit as GOES-17. Working together with GOES-16, the two new geostationary weather satellites will provide constant watch over the United States and the Western Hemisphere, from the west coast of Africa all the way to New Zealand, helping monitor severe storms, wildfires, and daily weather patterns. Since its launch, NOAA's GO-16 satellite has already demonstrated its critical capability for keeping our nation weather ready. Throughout the active 2017 hurricane season, GO-16 delivered imagery with detail and clarity never achieved before, with four times greater resolution than previous NOAA satellites, and delivered this imagery faster than ever before, helping forecasters predict the path of a storm and where and when it will intensify. These accurate and timely forecasts allowed for emergency managers to prepare for evacuations, map flood areas, and save lives. So the weather matters. Uh, the weather matters before the weather happens, and the weather matters after uh, the event happens, because what we're able to do to prepare, uh, allocate resources, uh, provide information to the public through the media uh, beforehand, and what we're able to do afterwards, how uh, and when the waters are going to recede so we know we can get vehicles with life-saving food and shelter equipment uh, down a particular highway. All of that depends on the forecast. In the GOES West position, GOES 17 will be able to provide critical data for the westernmost United States, Alaska, and Hawaii. We're talking about getting data updates in just seconds so we can quickly spot wildfires and closely monitor the wind direction and their intensity. The crispness of the data coming in at a faster rate will also help with fog forecasts. We can see the moment the strata starts to develop or when it starts to move out. Like GO-16, GO-17 carries a suite of advanced instruments, including tools for sophisticated earth sensing, lightning detecting, solar imaging, and space weather monitoring. As an equal partner in the sky, GOES-17 will expand coverage of the advanced baseline imager technology across the Pacific Ocean, allowing meteorologists and local officials to see severe weather systems developing in real time. So instead of seeing something, say, this large, that as you zoom in, actually gets kind of blurry, you're actually going to see something that is much more detailed. In its GOES West position, GOES-17 will be able to monitor conditions in the western U.S. like wildfires, coastal fog, and atmospheric rivers when storms from the Pacific dump heavy rain and snow over the western U.S. GOES-17 will have a major impact on fighting wildfires in California. Up-to-the-minute information in crisp detail allows forecasters to spot fires faster than ever before, even before the first 911 calls come in, and to better track and predict the path of large, dynamic, and dangerous fires. It's amazing to see what we can get uh, and at the level of detail and the speed uh, that we can get the information down into the ground that makes our decision making uh, way more accurate. With a view of the Pacific Ocean, GOES-17 will also provide a critical eye over shipping lanes vital to the U.S. economy, protecting cargo and passenger vessels from dangerous ocean storms. GOES-17 will also provide a high-definition view over Alaska, resulting in better weather forecasts and improved monitoring of sea ice, wildfires, and volcanic ash. The advanced baseline imager on GOES-17 can distinguish between clouds, sea ice, and snow cover, a critical need during Alaska's dark, cloudy winter months. GOES-17's geostationary lightning mapper monitors lightning flashes, including the in-cloud lightning most prevalent in severe storms, helping forecasters determine when a storm is forming intensifying and becoming more dangerous. Thanks to GOES-17, emergency managers will be equipped with more accurate weather predictions and faster warnings, 
providing a real impact, saving lives and protecting infrastructure. Watching over Earth from 22,300 miles above, GOES-S will provide vital data to our weather-ready nation. Hi, I'm JPSS. I'm a high-tech weather satellite that orbits our planet. I do something called a polar orbit. I circle the Earth from North Pole to South Pole, over and over, while the Earth spins. While I do that, I get lots of information about what's going on around the globe. I watch storms, clouds, and rain. I take the temperature of the ocean, measure air quality, ozone health, and take pictures of the land and sea. This information is used for all kinds of things. It helps us take care of our coasts and oceans and all the amazing things that live there. It helps us monitor harmful weather events like floods and droughts and measure the health of the environment. Most importantly, it helps us predict weather three to seven days in the future. That means I can be a big help ahead of storms, where future warnings are important. I send information to the National Weather Service. They use the information to create forecasts. The forecasts are shared with people all over the country to help prepare for weather emergencies. So you look to the sky and wave. I'll be flying by. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back for a look at your marine forecast. Starting out with the sea ice edge, we are seeing some ice growth along the west coast as well as some new ice in the northern part of Cook Inlet at this point. Expect that ice, especially along the west coast, to develop a bit more in the next couple of days as we see a bit of a break in weather systems. Taking a look, at winds and seas for the southeastern portion of the state for Wednesday. Quite a windy day across the marine area for the Panhandle with winds as high as 45 knots offshore winds out of the north for the Lynn Canal area and decreasing as we head south into the Panhandle about 20 knots over the southern gulf as well as those southern inside waterways that's going to be out of the south and east. Heading into the day on Thursday, winds come down some, but still some gale force winds in Lynn Canal, still out of the north about 35 knots, so coming down just a little bit. Over the Gulf, we'll see 10 to 20 knot winds generally out of the east and 15 to 25 knots for the inside waters south of the Lynn Canal. For South Central on Wednesday, we are looking at winds 10 to 15 knots in Cook Inlet, but quite a bit stronger as we head out into the Gulf, 20 to 30 knots, with some gusts as high as about 45 knots with that offshore flow there again as well. Seas rather low, though still just about 4 to 7 or 8 feet for Wednesday. Looking ahead into Thursday, we'll see winds decrease in the northern Gulf, but increasing as we get easterly flow in the northwestern Gulf, 25 to 35 knots out of the east and southeast. Seas still pretty consistent, 5 to 7 feet in the Gulf. For the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island areas, on Wednesday, we are looking at winds 15 to about 30 knots, seas anywhere from about 7 to 10 feet, lower in Bristol Bay about 4 feet on Wednesday. For Thursday, we've got our next system starting to come into the area, so winds increasing quite a bit on the southern side of the peninsula to about 45 knots out of the south and southwest those winds bringing the seas up as well 13 to 18 feet but decreasing significantly as we head further north from there just seven to nine feet as we get into bristol bay and up further into the northwestern gulf of alaska on thursday 
For the Aleutians on Wednesday, we've got westerly and southwesterly flow, 30 to 35 knots. Seas in the teens mostly from 11 to about 17 feet for the central and eastern Aleutians, but increasing into the western Aleutians 20 to 24 feet as we've got that system coming into the area. And then we'll see the peak winds and seas shift east on Thursday, 45 to 50 knot winds out of the south and west around Unalaska and Nikolsky on Thursday, decreasing as we head further west into the Aleutians to about 30 knots out of the west. And seas peaking 25 to 28 feet, uh, again, where their strongest winds are, decreasing as we head further west to about 20 feet out in the western Aleutians on Thursday. For the west coast on Wednesday, Winds 25 to 35 knots, generally out of the south and east. We can see those higher seas uh, still well out into the bearing, but we'll see seas as high as about 20 feet just south of St. Matthew Island. Heading into Thursday, winds and seas coming down a little bit for the northern part of the west coast from Norton Sound down to around Macquariuk, 25 to 30 knots out of the south, but increasing down near the Bristol Bay area, 35 to 40 knots, 40 knots out of the east down by the Pribilovs on Thursday. For the Arctic coast, we are looking at 10 to 15 knots along the north slope on Wednesday out of the south and some still some southerly winds for the northwest coast, 15 to 30 knots. And as we head into Thursday, decreasing winds along the north slope, 5 to 15 knots, pretty consistent, still about 15 to 30 knots uh, along the northwest coast there. And as recapping our situation for tonight, we are looking at high winds in the panhandle in the Juneau and Douglas areas. That high wind warning is in effect until 9 a.m. on Wednesday. Thanks so much for watching Alaska TV Weather. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank you.